You have a meta quest and want to use your PC in combination with, for example, a Quest 3 or another standalone VR headset? Then the virtual desktop tool could be just right for you, because with virtual desktop you can not only remotely control the screen of your PC and, for example, watch movies from your PC with your Quest in a virtual cinema, but also work in a cozy atmosphere or even play your PC games on a huge monitor without any cables. And if that's not enough, with Virtual Desktop you can also play PC VR games like Half-Life Alex wirelessly on your Quest. For this, Virtual Desktop has just recently received an update specifically for the Quest 3, which allows for example to operate the godlike mode at 120Hz per second. No other standalone headset can accomplish this in conjunction with Virtual Desktop up to now. But I'm getting ahead, we'll get to that soon. In this video I will introduce you to Virtual Desktop and show you how to set it up, work with it, play games and watch movies with it, as well as play Steam VR games with it, for example. Today we're delving into attitude details, explaining adjustable aspects and recommending essential settings for you to make. Especially in PC VR, Virtual Desktop competes with Airlink, shown in this video. In contrast to Airlink, Virtual Desktop is not available for free and its price is as high as 20 euros. Many of you may be asking, is the investment worth it? What added value do I have? We'll explore that today and I'll compare it for you. For more tutorials and info on improving your MetaQuest 3, subscribe to ZoxTube and turn on the bell as I'll show you the most important tips, tricks, tutorials and info about MetaQuest 3 here. If this video helps or you like it, then leave me a thumbs up and write in the comments if you prefer Airlink or Virtual Desktop if you already have experience with it. So let's not waste time, have fun watching video. Now let's move on to the requirements for this video. In order for all of us to start from the same point in this video, we first need to establish what is already assumed for this tutorial. If you want to play VR, you will need a VR compatible Windows PC. The minimum requirements for virtual desktop are a GTX 970 or an RX 580 graphics card. But if you want to consume or work with media using virtual desktop, the performance of your PC is not that important. No Windows PC needed, Virtual Desktop works on Mac too, no requirement for a Windows PC. There are just no VR games for that. To get the best result, your PC or Mac should be connected to the rotor with an Ethernet cable. Internet speed not important for Virtual Desktop, only connection between headset and computer, completely offline. To get a good connection on the headset side as well, you should connect it to the same router either via a 5 GHz or a 6 GHz network and you should also be in the same room as the router while playing. Every wall here could greatly impact the gaming experience and cause lag. A 2.4 GHz band, which is the typical network, is unfortunately inadequate for a seamless virtual desktop experience. If your router lacks 5 or 6 GHz, I've added a tested recommendation in the video description for you. The router is very powerful, and if you buy through the link in the video description, you won't pay more, but you'll support me in Gaming Room. And now we come to the setup, which is really easy. Step 1. You install Virtual Desktop on your headset. In the MetaQuest Store, for example, the app costs 20 euros. Step 2. Install Virtual Desktop Streamer app on PC. I have put the link in the video description for you. The streamer app broadcasts the image of your PC to the MetaQuest. To play VR games, you need Steam VR or the Rift Store on your personal computer PC. I'll give you the link for Quest software for PC where you can find Rift Store in video description. Um, the whole thing already works, as I said, without any problems with Steam VR. Simply download Steam VR as an extension for Steam and you can play Steam VR games wirelessly on your MetaQuest. Step 3. Commence Virtual Desktop, then initiate the streamer application on your personal computer and enter your meta name as the username. I call myself the Zoxtube VR, for example, in one go. This is basically the nickname you chose for yourself at Meta. Then you go to the Options tab on the left and select, for example, the preferred codec AV1 for the Quest 3. What other option there is, we'll talk about it right away. Then you put on your Meta Quest 3 and start Virtual Desktop. Make sure that Quest 3 is connected to the correct 5 or 6 GHz network. Then your PC should appear under Computer. 
In the app, you can now see your PC screen. You can now access the virtual desktop menu by pressing the menu button on the left controller, where you can, for example, switch the connected PC, edit the streaming settings, or easily start VR games. By the way, you always come back to this point when you press the menu button, hold for five seconds, and that's it for the setup for now. Now let's move on to the use cases. Use case one working. If you want to use Virtual Desktop to work with your MetaQuest on a large screen, you are already done. Now you just need to open the programs you need to work. You can use the controllers, hand tracking, as well as mouse and keyboard from the PC. Here though, I suggest deactivating Hands Interact with Desktop in Virtual Desktop's input settings to prevent hand tracking from interfering with mouse and keyboard input. I plan to create my own video in which I introduce you to several or maybe even better suitable programs than Virtual Desktop. If you're interested in a video on how to work with the MetaQuest, for example, via virtual screens, please write it in the comments. Use case 2. Watch movies. You can also watch great movies, for example, from a streaming provider or a Blu-ray in the virtual desktop. Do you have a local place where you uh, store copies of your purchased movies? Then you can enter this place in the video settings in the virtual desktop streamer. In the headset, you'll go here when you choose videos on the left and can select a movie instantly. Screen can be flexibly positioned. However, always recommend using controllers if in doubt because hand tracking input in virtual desktop not always precise for me. Also, 3D films can be watched without issues. Playback options can be found in toolbar below video. Use case 3. Play flat games. Why should one play regular PC VR games via virtual desktop instead of on their PC screen? Because it's awesome. Have you ever played Starfield, FIFA or Hitman on a giant screen, for example? Intense. In principle, there's nothing special to consider when gaming. You've set everything important beforehand. Just start the respective game on your PC and have fun. Use case 4, playing VR games. So, and now we finally come to the case why probably 90% of the people are watching this video. You can also play VR games using Virtual Desktop with Quest 3. And the initial step you should take is to adjust the streaming settings. In the streaming settings in Virtual Desktop on your Quest, you have various resolution settings. You can determine which of these settings is right for your PC VR setup based on the recommendations to the right. To check PC performance, see performance overlay in bottom right corner for respective settings evaluation on your computer. You can use this tool to see the latency and frames per second and determine when your PC reaches its limits. Games with a latency of up to 50 milliseconds are playable in offline single player games. Here, the 50 ms I just mentioned are more like a pain threshold. The further down you go, the better it is. Aim for about 30 to 40 milliseconds, then you can activate the synchronous space warp or SSW in virtual desktop. As a result, computed images on the PC are halved, saving computational power on your PC. The other part of the frames is calculated through intermediate frame calculation on the Quest 3. If set to auto, image calculation reduces when computer reaches performance limit and Quest takes over easily. So the computer could calculate, for example, 36 images and you would see 72 in the Quest, because the Snapdragon calculates the rest in between. However, this not only has advantages. One drawback of frame interpolation can be a blurry image, as seen in many games on the PSVR 2 when rapidly moving your head back and forth or in general. However, I could only notice this very, very, very slightly with my setup with Wi-Fi 6E and 120 frames per second. Therefore, synchronous space warp is a great thing from my point of view. However, you will also experience higher latency. But it offers the possibility to play high-quality games even with weaker PC hardware, because simply fewer images have to be calculated on the computer. We proceed with Snapdragon Gaming Super Resolution, also referred to as SGSR for short. Here, you can basically cheat a little. If you have a PC with the potato settings, the Snapdragon of your MetaQuest 3 can upscale the image to about the level of Ultra. But the game looks better if you, for example, let the high setting be extrapolated to Ultra, rather than the potato setting. That should, I think, be clear. If you have a powerful PC setup, you can already set it to Ultra or Godlike. Super Resolution does not provide any extra value, as it can only upscale to Ultra at most. Then we come to Video Buffering, which reduces jerking during the game. 
However, it slightly increases latency as it always holds back one frame until an inconsistency occurs in the stream and then this frame can be released to prevent stuttering. With an average PC and an average network, I recommend leaving the option on. If you have a high-end PC and a Wi-Fi 6E router, you may not need it. Then you still have the option to increase color vibrance. If you check the box, colors displayed more vividly and contrast of image increased is nice, so check it off. Then we come to another important topic, the bitrate. This depends on which codec you have selected on your PC in the virtual desktop streamer. All options have a maximum of 200 Mbit per second, except for the H264 Plus codec, which can transmit at a maximum bitrate of 400 Mbit per second, and therefore send twice as much data as all other codecs. Are you casual gamers? Then just use AV1 and set the bitrate to 200 if your network allows it. If you enjoy playing simulations such as racing games or games with lots of details, then a high bitrate and low latency are important. In that case, I would recommend using H264 Plus with a bitrate of 400. But maybe you have also had other experiences. Feel free to write that in the comments. And now again, a small guide on latency and settings. A high refresh rate, also known as a high FPS value in virtual desktop, has a positive impact on latency and reduces lag. High graphics settings, synchronous space warp, and buffering have a negative impact. However, in my tests, the Snapdragon Gaming Super Resolution has remained neutral in terms of latency. And now we come to my individual recommendations. First of all, take a look at your PC and adjust your graphics quality correctly. If you have the settings set to potato to high, then activate the Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. If you can achieve Ultra, leave it deactivated. Do you have a stable network with at least 5 GHz exclusively used with Quest 3? Choose H264 Plus codec with a bit rate of 400. First, adjust the frame rate, also known as the FPS value according to your own preference. A good start is now, but first 90 FPS for example. Also deactivate SSW and video buffering for now. Now it's time for fine tuning. To do this, activate performance overlay at bottom right and start game you want to play. For example, I often take Half-Life Alex as a reference. Is something running around doing some things and observing if the frames per second stay constant in the top left corner? If they remain constant, you could try increasing the FPS in Virtual Desktop next. But if they cannot be held constant, then the synchronous space warp is activated. If you still have break-ins, the images per second must be reduced further. And when you arrive at a juncture where the frames cease to fall within the orange range, it is contingent upon your network. If there are occasional small jerks here and there, activate video buffering as well. If there are no jerks, then turn off video buffering. And if you cannot get below 50 milliseconds, you still have the option to lower the bitrate to, for instance, 200 in order to speed things up a bit. Conclusion on virtual desktop. The question that many are now asking is, do I need virtual desktop and wireless PC VR to play? And I clearly state no. You can also perform it exactly as described in this video, but it is simply so convenient and it also functions effectively via virtual desktop. You have a shared game catalog from SteamVR as well as from the Rift Store and you can easily access them through the Games tab. Games start automatically with optimized versions for respective controllers in use. And the quality settings and quality monitoring are simply superbly regulated and also kept comfortable. Which way will you use? A virtual desktop or AirLink? Are there perhaps also people who want to use virtual desktop productively for movies or gaming? Comment it, I'm thrilled to hear from you. Did you enjoy or find this video helpful? Then please like and maybe recommend it to others if you know people who might be interested. On the right, you'll find my playlist with all videos about MetaQuest 3. In this video, you'll find tips, tricks and tutorials to get the most out of your Quest 3. The video on the left side is suggested to you by the almighty YouTube algorithm. Thank you to my Patreons, thank you for your thumbs up and comments and see you in the next video of ZoxTube.